The Japanese yen is strengthening. There are many signs pointing to that yen will have to strengthen. In this video, I will share two reasons why yen will strengthen and why this is a major risk for the stock market. Major risk for any stock market in the world. In fact, major risk for any instrument in the world. What is happening now? As I'm recording this video, I think that Bank of Japan just intervened in the market. There is no news to confirm, but look at the spike. There can only be one explanation. Dollar yen was near to the 150 level and BOJ doesn't like it. Japanese Finance Minister Suzuki said just yesterday, Tuesday, that any decision on currency market intervention would be based on volatility, not specific yen levels. He said, currency levels won't be a factor for judgment. Well, see what happened when dollar yen went to 150, boom, the yen immediately went up. BOJ intervened in the currency market twice in October and December 2022 when dollar yen was at 150. However, in 2023 now, as the dollar yen is near to the 150 level, the conditions for Japan change. There are two notable changes in its economy. First, inflation has been rising steadily since the beginning of the year, and it shows no signs of slowing down. The quarterly Tangkang survey found that they expect prices to continue rising in the next five years. This means what? This means that inflation is likely going to continue and is likely to be beyond 2%. Second, Japan's annual wage negotiation have resulted in the largest pay increase for 30 years. But remember, this is the largest increase since 1993. This spring, we saw that the employers and the union agree on a 3.58% pay rise. This trend could well continue given corporate profits are set to reach all-time highs, coupled with prospects of higher wages along with business expectations for rising inflation, corporations may be more inclined to pass on higher prices to consumers compared with the past. You might think that this is Japan's internal problem, and that Japan had maintained its ultra-loose monetary policy for so long, it doesn't really matter to let the short-term interest rate moved up a little bit, isn't it? Well, the BOJ current policy is called the U-curve control, YCC. It guides the short-term interest rate at negative 0.1% and caps the 10-year government bond yield around 0%. Now, the reason is to push up inflation to make it more sustainable around its 2% target. With inflation above 2% for more than a year, plus the largest pay increase for 30 years, the BOJ is under stress to revise its decade-old ultra-loose policy. Then, if BOJ revises its ultra-loose policy, then naturally the yen will rise. Then, why are we concerned about rising yen? Well, this has to do with carry trade. Well, what is a carry trade? Now, because of the ultra-loose monetary policy, when an investor borrow money in yen, the interest rate charged to the investors is very low. He can then convert the borrowed money to another currency and invest in any instrument of a higher interest rate for higher returns. The investor then earns the difference between the two interest rates minus any currency exchange costs. Now, let me just give you an example. An investor borrows Japanese yen 100 million at a 0.5% interest rate and converts it to 1 million USD. The investors then invest the 1 million USD in US Treasury bonds, which are yielding 3%. The investors earn a profit of 2.5% per year on the difference between the two interest rates minus any currency exchange costs. Now, this is what we call as a carry trade. The key thing is about the size of the yen carry trade. The size of the yen carry trade is difficult to determine. However, estimates range from 2 trillion USD to 10 trillion USD. One of the most widely cited estimates of the carry trade size comes from a 2010 paper by Tim Lee of Pi Economics. Lee estimated that the size of the yen carry trade was around USD 1 trillion at that point of time. However, Lee's estimate was based on the data from 2007 and the size of the carry trade is likely to have changed since then. 
Well, you might be thinking then, how much is US 10 trillion? Here are some comparisons to help you understand. It is more than the combined GDP of Japan and Germany. It is enough to buy over 1 billion ounces of gold. It is enough to build over 100 million new homes in the United States. It is enough to fund the US government for over two years. It is more than the total value of all the stocks listed in the New York Stock Exchange. To give you something that is more relevant to us, if you evenly distributed the 10 trillion USD to every person on earth, I repeat, every person on earth, each person will receive over 1,200 USD. This comparison may help you get a sense of its magnitude. Then, why must we be concerned when BOJ decided to take a pause in the ultra loose policy? Imagine you have 10 trillion, estimate 10 trillion, or not, maybe not 10 trillion, maybe 2 trillion USD out there, and you have this. 2 trillion try and scramble to get back into the yen trade when there is unwinding of the yen carry trade. What will happen to those risk assets that is being bought with this cheap yen? You find that immediately there is a huge unwinding process that will continue. Imagine now that the interest to borrow yen is not 0.5% but 1% then the differential interest will be much lesser. Then the investors will decide to unwind by selling the high yield assets that they bought, isn't it? And the key thing is, right, they are not going to unwind in a slow mode. The unwinding of the carry trade will happen in a very fast way, in a very fast manner, because right now the investors will be hit with a double whammy. In our previous example, I said that investors borrow at a 0.5% interest rate and then invest in US Treasury bonds which are yielding 3%. To buy the US Treasuries, the amount has to be converted to USD. So this also means that the investors will be faced with currency risk. Since the investors is holding US dollar, he is essentially betting the US dollar will not depreciate against the Japanese yen by more than 2.5% per year. If the US dollar does depreciate by more than 2.5% per year, investors will lose money on their carry trade position. So to unwind their carry trade position, the investors would sell the US Treasury bonds and buy back the Japanese yen. But if the yen has appreciated drastically or that the US dollar has depreciated drastically, then it makes the carry trade very unattractive. So in order to prevent a lot of currency losses, the unwinding process has to be quick. When a process is quick, then this will lead to currency volatility. This is a situation that Suzuki, Finance Minister of Japan, don't want to see. If a large number of investors unwind their carry trade at the same time and they're unwinding at a fast speed, this could lead to the sell-off in the high-yielding risk asset and the rally in the Japanese yen. And if many, many and many, many large investors start to unwind this high-yielding asset at the same time, then this would lead to a market sell-off. The least thing I could add is that this might lead to a market crash. And if I might recap your memory, the unwinding of carry trades has turned the Asian financial crisis we experienced during the 1997-1998 period. The crisis spread quickly with currencies across the region falling. In South Korea, the won lost over 40% of its value. Against the USD, in Indonesia, the rupiah lost over 80% of its value against the US dollar. The crisis did not start because of carry trade, but the crisis was hastened by the unwinding of carry trade, which led to a sudden reversal of capital flows out of the region. A paper published by the Asian Development Bank suggested that carry trade played a role in the Asia financial crisis. Another paper published in the J Store looks at the Asian financial crisis from the point of view of the yen carry trades used by the Japanese bank. The paper suggested that the crisis caused many of the yen carry trades to become unstable. 
Well, there are many reasons why investors want to unwind the yen carry trade over the years. Some of the factors come from Japan itself, such as 1. A rising yen. If the yen is rising, the yen carry trade becomes unprofitable and investors could lose substantial money if the yen rises against the high yu currency. Or there could be a change in interest rate. If interest rate in Japan rises, the yen carry trade becomes less profitable and investors may choose to unwind their trades. Or there could be just simply a change in the risk appetite. For example, carry trades are popular when there is ample risk appetite. However, if the financial environment changes abruptly and speculators become more risk adverse, then carry trade might become less attractive. The unwinding of the carry trade definitely doesn't sound nice, especially on the face of a pending recession. Now, if Japan is going to make changes to its interest rate via the U curve control, then this could spiral into a unwinding of the carry trade. And this is what the market is fearful or I am fearful about. Imagine if the world financial assets are being funded by cheap Japanese yen and if there's a flood to convert all these high risk assets into yen and to pay back to the Bank of Japan. And if they're going to do it in a very quick mode, then what will happen to the high risk assets such as the stocks, such as the bonds or even the high yielding currency. So this is why the unwinding of the Japanese yen is going to be a high risk factor to consider for the stock market. It is not only going to affect the stock market, it is going to be a tsunami that is going to affect many other financial instruments and that might also affect for a period of time, especially if recession is going to hit at the same time. I will share more about when the stock market might correct or even crash if there is a recession in the pipeline. Meanwhile, if you would like to know when I have launched the video, hit the subscribe button so that you don't miss out any of the new update. And of course, join this Telegram channel, scan the QR code to get real-time updates as well. If you would like to know how I turned our winding of yen carry trades into opportunities, check out my 100% full cashback course on Watch and Means. Till then, see you in my next video. These are trades which are done by myself or my students using the Alien Wall strategy. Join our community and take advantage of our 6 times a week training lessons, automated trade signals and live trading sessions with our experienced Alien traders. And for a limited time, we are offering a 100% full cashback offer on our course fee. That's right, you can learn our strategy risk-free. Over 1,000 students have already taken advantage of this offer and seen success. Visit this website now to learn more and join our community.